This is the best preserved 19th century home in all of Manhattan. This is the Merchant's House Museum. And I'm super hyped to go inside this home for a tour. We're joined by tour guide, Ashley. Hi. And Ashley, what is your role in the home? Well, welcome, first of all. My role in the home is I am a volunteer and I lead people on tours through the house, both during the day and in October, when we transition to spooky season, we are labeled Manhattan's most haunted house. So I also do ghost tours throughout the house during October. But really, I am a volunteer here because as a public historian and New York City tour guide, I feel so strongly in preserving the history of our city and being able to tell the stories that people need to know about our town. And where are we located right now? So this is on 4th Street. Right now we're on 4th Street. Was called the Bond Street area during the 19th century when our family, the Treadwell family, who you will meet, moved into this house. So this area was the height of fashion for the New York elite. Now, to understand that, what you have to know is that New York, Manhattan Island, is a long, narrow island. And at the very bottom, you have the seaport. The seaport was massively popular in the 18th and 19th century. The thing is, our seaport during that time was second only to London in maritime traffic. So imagine loud, imagine crowded, imagine boisterous. The families who once dwelled in that area didn't like that crowd, so they started to move uptown. And even though Manhattan goes almost for nine miles now, this, just a little bit above the seaport, was considered uptown. So our family that dwelled in this house moved here in 1835. <laughs> and they built a very nice house for themselves. So let's get closer to the house. And uh, what's the intersection that we're at right now? So we have Bowery and Lincoln, and we are on 4th Street. 4th Street. And then there's huge signage here. Something's happening with the home. What is happening? know how important that is. Our house is very delicate because on either side its sister houses no longer stand. The problem is we are fighting a developer who wants to build an office building right next door. Mm. Now we are landmarked. And a tall one at that, right? Uh, yes, yeah. several stories. We're thinking eight okay. to nine stories. We're landmarked both interior and exterior at the city, state, and federal level. That protects our house. What it does not protect is the land on either side of the house. Unfortunately, our engineers have essentially said that any construction next door to build a building of that magnitude would render this building possibly irreparably damaged. Oh no. Oh, that not would be a just, big shame. Yeah. Not just the internal glory, which is our plaster work and this beautifully, beautifully preserved family home, but the building itself structurally could be compromised. Mm. And even if they go forward with building that, you have to imagine that we need to empty the museum of all of the objects which have to go live on another site. Mm. Really unfortunate because the problem is every object in this house, generally speaking, belonged to the family that lived here. These objects have all been here for almost 200 years. This is their home. They are climatized to this. So upon moving them, Hey, New York. <laughs> Conservation would have to happen for all these objects and they could be damaged too. So we're looking at damage to both the building, the interior of the building, and the actual objects that we hold in our collection that tell the story of the Treadwell family. We've been fighting this fight for almost 12 years. Upwards of a million dollars has gone into oh, wow. trying to prevent this from happening so that we can keep the only house of its kind in New York City standing and continue to teach New Yorkers and people from around the world about the history of our town. All right, so let's take a look inside the Merchant's House Museum. Let me show you the landmark plaque. And right over here, we have a National Historic Landmark, Old Merchant's House of New York. And it's also known as one of the more haunted homes of New York City, which we'll get into as well. <laughs> and they embrace that history. I asked, I asked beforehand, so I'm so excited to learn a little bit about that. We're gonna ring the doorbell and, and get let in here. And this is Ashley, so say hello to Ashley in the hello. comments. 
the door opened by itself. Oh my God. <laughs> so as we come in, we're gonna to have to adjust our eyes to the yes. lighting, right? And that's actually something to think about as you visit a historic home, especially one that was built and lived in in the 19th century, the lighting was very different than we're used to now. Abundant electric light is something we take for granted, but in the 19th century, it was a little bit different. And we'll talk about that as we move through the house. Oh, that's right, yeah, exactly. Well, it's still been candlelit when they originally constructed? Uh, original construction, you would have had a variety of different things. You've got candles, you've got gas, and eventually the house was wired for electricity. Mm. Um, I'm thinking, let's start downstairs. Let's do it, In the yeah. most common area. And a few people were asking about the sound, so unfortunately, uh, well, there was a mishap with my mic, and the mic broke uh, mysteriously here in the home. So, <laughs> it happens. So we're we're going micless, but hopefully you'll be able to hear us inside. Well, now that we're inside, I think that the sound will be a little bit better since we don't have our New York City street sounds. Um, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see. This oh yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah. So this is our. This is the Treadwell family. You've got Father Seabury, and if we move down to Mother Eliza, and believe it or not, they had eight children. Elizabeth, wow. Horace, Mary, and we'll come up here to Samuel, mm. Phoebe, Julia, Sarah, and Gertrude. Now, oh, Gertrude. she was the youngest. Gertrude was our youngest. And now that you've seen the family, I'll give you a little bit of information about how they ended up here in this house. Mm -hmm. So Seabury Treadwell, the patriarch of our story, he made his fortune um, as a merchant. And that, mm -hmm. he retires here to this house on 4th Street. Um, they move in in 1835. He's retired, he's wealthy. Again, this is the Bond Street area. This is where you go. Similar class. So History has repeated itself. It, tends to. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's yes. the case today. Yeah. Exactly. Very famous celebrities live just across the block. So. Literally. Yeah. Um, so Seabury moves here with his seven children. Mm. Important to note, seven, not eight, because five years later in 1840, our heroine Gertrude is born. Mm. And we call her the heroine of our story mm -hmm. because she lives in this house her entire life. Mm. Gertrude is born in 1840, right upstairs. Gertrude lives through uh, the election of Abraham Lincoln the Civil War, uh, Reconstruction, Harlem Renaissance, uh, the building and opening of the Brooklyn Bridge, the turn of the century, women, white women getting the white right to vote, World War I, the stock market crash, the Great Depression. So Gertrude <laughs> lives through our American history canon. And then she dies upstairs mm -hmm. in 1933, the last member of the immediate Treadwell family, having outlived all her other family members. She, she must have been very old at that she time. She was, quite so oh. 1840 to 1933, do the math, right? Oh. So when she passes away, the house is in a very different condition than it was when she grew up here. Um, the neighborhood has changed, mm. as neighborhoods in New York are want to do. It has become much less desirable. And Gertrude has outlived her fortune, the fortune that her father had left her. She has taken out um, bank loans against the house. There are renters in the house, boarders. She has someone who's here caring for her, but predominantly she's just upstairs and alone on that floor and she passes away. Mm. And a distant cousin hears that the house is in financial difficulty, happens upon, sees that Gertrude has essentially left this house in a, a frozen time capsule from the 19th century and he is able to financially save the house in 1933. Three years later, opens it as the Merchant's House Museum to tell the story of the Treadwell family who spent their entire life here. Oh, wow, such an interesting story, I love that. Yeah, so this is Gertrude this everyone. Is Gertrude. Just keep her in mind as we walk around the house. And I love that Seabury had such a classic 18th century, 19th century name. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> you know well. what? It's interesting. <laughs> Let's, as we go into the family room here, Seabury uh. is actually named after one of his relatives, Samuel Seabury. Ah, interesting. And if you're a fan of the Hamilton musical, you might have yeah. heard the name Samuel Seabury. He is a preacher. Seabury is a descendant of his and is named after. Oh, wow. So our, our, our American <laughs> stories cool are intersecting, yeah. yeah, right? So here we are in what we call the family room. 
Yeah. Now the family room is generally speaking quite plain because this was a comfortable place for the family to come. They would mm. dine in here. You can imagine them having a, their evening, their quiet evening together, maybe on the couch reading, writing a letter, sewing, having their dinner and shifts. Now the thing is, guests would never come down to this room. Mm. This was the cozy family room. This is where you put the old furniture that was still comfortable, but perhaps out of fashion. Right. Uh, similar to what we might have as a, a den or a cozy family room. <laughs> and so this room does not show a lot of the perhaps what we would think of as rich folks adornment. You've got a nice carpet here, but there are telltale signs that this Was carpet, this the original this carpeting? This is not original carpet, okay. this is a replica, but a telltale sign that mm. this was not a place where guests would be is that the design is predominantly in the middle of the room. Right. The design does not go to the edges. Uh, it's just plain around the edges. Huh. Why? Because the furniture covers it up. <laughs> so. Oh, over it was here. very practical. It, and, it, it was practical. And everyone, we'll do our best to speak as loud as possible so you can hear us. If you need me to be louder, <laughs> I shall. Okay. Um, over here, if you, I'm not sure what a good shot you can get, but yeah. these, our current exhibition is Tiny Beautiful Things, mm. which were children's garments and adornments from the 19th century. Now, when the Treadwells, as they slowly passed away mm. and then Gertrude died and the house was left, what was found was a number of things like dresses, clothing, objects, things that the family had kept. Mm. And so in our rotating collections, we like to showcase little pieces of the family's history, like these tiny children's booties mm. that were left behind. 39 dresses of the women were found. We showcase those throughout the year, the ones that can be displayed. Um, Did Gertrude have children? Gertrude did not have children. She never even married. Oh, wow. Of the six sisters, only two got married. Mm -hmm. And a lot, often people say, why? In that period, normally women would get married. These, these Treadwell daughters, they had financial wealth. They mm -hmm. didn't necessarily need to marry. We don't know why they didn't marry, the six of them, um, or the, the four daughters. It's unfortunate that we don't have that record two of the daughters did get married and they ended up moving back here with their husbands and having children so at one point there was 21 people in this house including the four irish servants we'll talk more about them later on on the tour oh that's fascinating um and dutch maws and a few other people say is this one of the most haunted homes in new york city it is it is considered in the top uh and we'll talk a little bit more about that soon. we will yeah. and when we do the ghost tours we start right down here oh, you so do. i'll i'll and let me sh let me show a little bit around here. So wow, it's beautiful that the house is so well kept even to this day. Yeah, wow, beautiful. And something you'll yeah. notice in this particular room, I'm mm. not sure if you can pan up. Okay. The ceilings down here are low. They are very low, yeah. That huh. in the 19th century means that you are keeping cool in the summer mm. and warm in the winter. It's not taking a lot to keep this room temperate. So that's another reason the family would spend their time down here. And this fixture on the ceiling, anytime you see one of these medallions, you know that at one point there was a lighting fixture showcasing probably glass globe for gaslight there. Oh, fascinating. Mm. All right, let's move let's through go, the yeah. hallway to the kitchen, yeah. which was one of the busiest places. And how well off were they? Did they uh, were they that's fairly a, wealthy? Or? Yeah, that's an yeah. excellent question. The Treadwells were, and one of the things about being the one percent during this era was that your house looked exactly like everyone else's house that was how you showed your wealth that you could look like your neighbors mm. people keeping up with the joneses as it were and we actually have a a primary source a sort of diary entry from i don't remember if it's the treadwells or house they were in because they all looked alike <laughs> <laughs> so that's important to know now as we come to our kitchen here. I want you to imagine what this room felt like warmth-wise, yeah. what it smelled like. At one point, there would be maybe 20 loaves of bread being baked a day here, which seems like a lot, but there was bread with every meal. Now, they had four Irish servants. We know this from census records. Um, we have their names. We know when they lived here, how long they worked for the Treadwells. 
And you can imagine that the Irish servants would get up before the sun and they would come down and get ready to start the day. Mm. Two would predominantly work in the kitchen and then two were keeping the house. This kitchen has what we call a beehive oven. You would start your fire down here, get it nice and hot. It's sort of it's the oven that we have today. Oh, I see. And you could cook your items that need <laughs> hot heat first, and then as the day went, fire died down, your more delicate pastries and whatnot. And they could live in here just to stay warm. Then also... Oh, oh yeah, that's clever. That is, <laughs> it's it's like a little warming room. Yeah. <laughs> A pie safe. It's Ooh. a safe for your pies. Oh, that because sounds good. In yeah. the 19th century, <laughs> as is today, we had some vermin problems oh, in New no. York City, <laughs> as with most big it's cities, a, really, right? To keep your pies very safe. It was to keep your pies safe. <laughs> any, any, any still in there? There are no pies oh, okay. in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Another thing that they would do is to put a, a crock yeah. of. Yeah. They cooked over a hearth. Mm. The height of technology arrives, the stove. Oh, now don't... we've got eight burners and several different oven spots. Mm. You can imagine this was the height of technology and must have been very difficult to learn how to use. If you're someone who's used to cooking over a hearth, this is a big leap. Mm. So I'm curious how the Irish servants must have felt. Yeah, that looks that very high tech. They need yeah, to uh, maintain uh, something so complex. In older homes, I'm used to seeing the pots hang off right on top of the fireplace. Exactly. Yeah. So wow. they did have running water. Oh, well, they did. Oh, interesting. Okay. And a cistern outside uh -huh. would collect rainwater. Now that rainwater was used predominantly for washing, bathing, doing the laundry, but drinking water during this time in New York really got. Let's not go upstairs because unfortunately there's bad cell. <laughs> they weren't built for cell reception. So let us know where you're watching from, everyone, and. Uh, we're right now at the Merchant's House Museum here in New York City. So, and do check out their website and lend a helping hand because the museum is a bit in danger. So check it out and visit the museum if you're coming here to New York City. I'm going to ask you to show yeah. a shot of this front door yeah. here. Now, the front door is actually a bit of an art piece. Okay. Let's say I was a neighbor coming to visit Mrs. Treadwell. I would come to the front door and I would ring. Mm. And you are a servant who opens the door. <laughs> and I say, hello, I'm here to see Mrs. Treadwell. And I present to you my calling card, which has my name on it. And you then take the calling card upstairs while I wait in this beautiful jewel box of a vestibule. With oh, wow. Yeah, it is very decorative. <laughs> <laughs> are, uh, the faux Italian marble. This and was, very much was it faux? Style. Was it yes. faux back in then? Okay. That was the style. It's hand painted with a turkey feather. And this is very reminiscent of uh, fancy apartment buildings in the 1920s and 30s. Exactly. So. And Marvel never really style. went away as yeah. a style. So I, the neighbor, am waiting, 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 while you, the servant, have run upstairs to say, Mrs. Treadwell, uh, Miss mm. Ashley is here to see you. And Mrs. Treadwell decides if she is at home or not at home. <laughs> not at home is the 19th century version of being left on red. Okay, she, <laughs> so yeah. it is her choice. Left on red, yeah, exactly. Let's say yeah. that Mrs. Treadwell decides she's at home. The, the guest would come here. Mrs. Treadwell comes down. There's a moment they greet each other. And then they begin this very typical, very boring, according to some sources, social protocol. Mm. Come into the grand double parlors and we will talk about that social <laughs> protocol. Oh, wow. So you can see this is very different than the family room. Yeah, very beautiful. Very here big. we have, if you oh, wow. focus up here, this work, the recessed medallions, yeah. which are incredible, um, from them hang what are known as gasoliers, which is just what that sounds like, chandeliers, but with gas. Now, this is as bright as these would have oh, gotten. Really? That, oh, wow. They were quite dim. Yeah. And, and we, th there was a gas network already by that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the merchant's house is lucky to have what is considered the finest in situ 
of this type of lighting with that type of medallion in the United States. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yes. And unfortunately, huh. the plaster work that you see all huh. around these gorgeous Greek Revival um, parlor rooms mm -hmm. is very much in danger mm. by that construction that you see next door. Um, so that is one of the things we are fighting to preserve because it yes. is unparalleled in its uniqueness and its beauty in the United States. Yeah, for context, a lot of these um, townhouses were meant to be built like a bookcase. You know, they're all stacked up next to each other in order to sustain each other. And unfortunately, since those two homes are away, uh, the stru structural integrity is at danger. So I did say the grand double parlors, yeah. the Greek revival. You can see mm. the Greek influence from the Ionic columns yeah. here. Again, that was very much the style of mm. the day. And one of the things about the style is that these two rooms are twins of each other. You have twin windows, oh. you have twin mirrors, twin lighting fixtures, oh, yeah, you're twin right. fireplaces, huh. and huh. twin doors. Now the doors are, the, the symmetry that you experience in Greek Revival, this is a very subtle feature that mm. wealthy folks would have um, been very privy to. You can even see that these mahogany boards are the images of each other because yeah. that's how far the detail goes in this symmetry of the Greek Revival. So it's beautiful. Wow. It, Would this door still be original? Yes, these are original. Really, it looks like new. Wow. Isn't it incredible? Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the secrets is you've got two doors in there and two doors in here, but this door is not functional. Okay. That opens to a blank wall. <laughs> they just have it there for looks. And it's decorative. Yes, I noticed you looking at this. Yes. You can't pull them open, but these are the doors that would separate the two rooms. And these are original. Absolutely. Sliding original. doors, wow, Sliding existed doors. back then. Uh, and people are asking about the door doorknobs. Are the doorknobs also uh, they original? They sure are. Mm. And do you can see the? Can you see that? Yeah, we can. Yeah. So oh. we do have oh. skeleton keys that open these. And in fact, oh. one of our doors downstairs, when we close up at night, we lock. Key. Oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah, which is, <laughs> Just like I the movies. So, uh, sorry to interrupt, has this been featured in any films? The house, yeah. uh, it has not been filmed. I don't think films have been filmed here. Here, okay. The yeah. movie The Heiress, there is some influence from the house, but it's before my time, and I'm not sure if they actually right. filmed in here. Okay. Um, going quickly back to the social reception that Mrs. Treadwell would have had, mm -hmm. if you and I were having a moment, we would have come in here, sat down, had our tea, we would have talked about our children, the weather, schooling, and nothing else really. It would last about 20 minutes, you would be on your way, and then I have to repay the favor within two or three days. <laughs> this is the social calling, that was how their social circles oh, worked. I see. <laughs> yes. So these doors would usually remain closed unless there was a grand event. Mm. Perhaps we're having a big party or a dance or a musical event or a wedding, which did also happen, or a funeral. Oh. Because in the 19th century, the funeral industry really was still very much a personal thing mm. at home. And so if you do visit our house in October, or if you look online for some of our programming, you'll find that we have turned the house into um, a mourning period where the glass is, the, the uh, mirrors are covered, the lights are dimmed, there are lilies, and we do display a coffin right here. Oh, wow, yeah. Which is where the Treadwells would have had their wake. Mm, because it's such a big family, I assume. They have a few times. Seabury was waked mm. here, the father. This is the original. Oh, wow. Well, the original piano, too. Wow. That it's their daughters huge. would have played. And would have learned to play the piano. That was just an expectation. Any form of entertainment because no, no TV, no radio yet. No, not uh, yet. Singing, mm. reading to each other, right. playing the piano. Wow. How's your reception better? It, yeah, it's great. Uh, and this is, wow, such a beautiful home. And it's huge, the space, really. Uh, really grand. And here would have been, would this represent a pie? That, uh, or cakes. Or cakes. cakes. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Okay. So you That's can see it. it's sort of set up for a, <laughs> yeah. a small little festivity. <laughs> this table actually would extend to C14. Really? And were these been original crystals from, yes. from uh, Gertrude's time? That's yeah. one of the things that you're going to notice all wow. throughout the house. 
and especially yeah. in the parlor, mm. is take a look at how many reflective surfaces there are. Yeah. So you see crystals, uh, mirrors, silver, gold. Everything that reflects light is <laughs> meant to throw that light around so oh. you look as good as possible. Oh, I see. If you are hosting, you want that candlelight dancing off everything. So even the jewelry that women would wear, the fabric, the suits the men would wear, all meant to illuminate. Oh, fascinating. In a time when electric light was not available yet. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating to think about. That's something that, of course, changed once lighting came uh, and became ubiquitous. Absolutely. Uh, shall we head upstairs to the yeah, bedroom? we shall, yeah. And here's the carpeting. Yeah, all right, let's go upstairs. Super excited. Does the fireplace still work, asks Wendy. Ooh, excellent question. Yeah. I don't know, but we can find out. So an interesting tidbit, if you look out this window, you see a fire escape. Yeah. This fire escape is not original to the house. No, of course Fire not. escapes weren't even required until much later after the Treadwells moved in. Mm. Fire escape didn't get put here until it was turned into a museum in the 1930s. <laughs> I see. <laughs> And here we can see the backside of what is behind the house. So we're going to enter the bedroom of uh, Eliza Treadwell, our matriarch. Oh. Now, one of the things that is so wow. fascinating, isn't it incredible? This is bigger than most New York City apartments. It truly is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, this is the bed Gertrude was yeah, born well, in. Oh, she was born right here. Yeah. So home birth. Nice. As they uh, were yeah. during that time, because the hospitals were really for mm. folks who could not afford to have care at home. Right. If you had the means, you brought the doctors to you. Mm. If you didn't have the means, you went to a public place to get medical care. Now, this room, people often say that it has a very uh, motherly energy. It does, yeah. You can uh, imagine uh, Eliza tending to a has, sick child. You can't. Yeah. Tending to a sick child who mm. maybe just needs a little extra TLC, mm. or this bed, this little day bed, could house a visiting cousin. Mm. This would be where all the ladies got ready for perhaps a party downstairs. Oh, right. And on this desk, you see that there's some literature out. Keep in mind, during this era, the primary means of communication was letter writing. Mm. And the women of this period were jotting off letters to friends and family in the same way that we send emails today. It could be just saying hello, not much is happening, cherry blossoms are finally blooming, off it goes, and they might be writing dozens of letters a day. Mm -hmm. Something to note about a historic house yeah. is when you are interpreting what it was like, you have to look for clues on the uh, accuracy of things. We know that the furniture is where it is mm -hmm. or was there because it's been 200 years and the floors are actually worn in a certain pattern that tells us where furniture was. Oh, we yeah. can tell by the indentations or by the wear and tear where things were. So mm. we know that this bed was here. Um, and I just love those little secrets from the past. That's really cool that you can tell even by the indentation, yeah. yeah. And then uh, why no carpeting on the floor like this? That's a great question. Yeah. During the Treadwell's time, there yeah. absolutely would be carpeting. It would be either carpeting or something that we think of as like a woven type sisal mat um, that we have downstairs. But for ease of cleaning and whatnot mm. now, it's just wood. We value wood now. Yeah. <laughs> we think, oh, my old hardwood floors, they would have never, they would have covered those up. They would have covered <laughs> yeah. it up. Yeah, it makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. So this is a room wow. where some yeah. ghostly things have taken Ooh, place. Okay. Uh, it is often called the most haunted room <laughs> in the most here, haunted okay. house in Manhattan. Feels rather pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it feels rather pleasant. For now. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a place where people have heard things. Many folks, including uh, yeah. someone that I was on a tour with, I was with another guide, she was leading a tour, she was talking like I am, and all of a sudden she jumped. <laughs> and then after I said, what, what happened? She said, well, while I was talking, someone grabbed me on my shoulder, but there was no one there. Uh -huh. So it was, we don't think of it as frightening, <laughs> but we're definitely not alone in the merchant's house. <laughs> right. And one thing that I'll tell you, so. You might have noticed that I said this is Eliza's bedroom, the matriarch. Uh oh. Separate bedrooms. Oh, okay. From her husband. Right. So we're going to journey into Seabury's bedroom. Her husband, they slept separately. Why not? They had the means to. They had a massive <laughs> house. So 
something folks report. Oh, if you want to show this really quick. Yeah, what is this? This is a fascinating relic. It's not a chamber pot, right? It is not a chamber pot. Okay, okay. The chamber pot would have been smaller. This oh, right here is the chamber pot. Nice. Yep, and, <laughs> and you would use that maybe in the dead of the night if you right. didn't want to go out to the outhouse. Yeah. This was called a hat tub. Oh. It's shaped like a hat, but it is a bathtub. One oh. of the things that people often think about this era is that people were dirtier or didn't bathe as much. And the truth is, of course they bathed. They just didn't immerse themselves fully in a bathtub or a shower Splash. like we do. Exactly. <laughs> they would fill this with hot water, sit right here, do a quick sponge bath, easy peasy. Mm. So bathing happened. It just looked different. And it took some... Uh, um, servants to help with the heating of the water, bringing it up here. As you can yes. imagine, the servants were carrying a <laughs> yeah. lot of And then drying stairs. everything. Let's head to the next bedroom. And here we have the fireplace as well. And Susie said that she just saw one of the ghosts in the closet over here as well. Could be, could be, <laughs> let's see. Um, Are you here? No. Mm -hmm. She there went away. A, there's, a, there's a cough in this. <laughs> but such, such is a historic house. Now, uh, Joe of, says a couple that sleep, sleep separately is a happy couple. They were married for a very long <laughs> very time. They had eight children. Come on. <laughs> Look at this beautiful New York closet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, we have some historic oh, um, toilets in here, but this would have okay. been storage. Right. And you can imagine if you got an apartment in New York City with this kind of storage. Incredible, right? Yeah, yeah. This is like the walk-in closet from uh, Sex and the City. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. In the Patriarch's oh, bedroom, wow. Seabury. Now, Seabury Treadwell unfortunately yeah. met his end in this bed. He passed away. Oh, he did? Oh, wow. In 1865. He died peacefully? He unfortunately did not die peacefully. Oh, no. He had a horrible, painful kidney condition called Bright's disease. And as I said mm. before, he did not go to the hospital. They came to him. And he, he would have died what was termed then a good Victorian death surrounded by his family. Mm. And that is what happened. This is the same bed that Gertrude died in, in 1933. Oh, wow. So often yeah. guests and volunteers report that this bedroom, which overlooks 4th Street, yeah. has a very different vibe than the bedroom we just came from. Right. This is a room where, going to the spooky side of things, people report they feel somewhat watched that mm. someone's paying attention to what they do in this room. Mm. And so when I'm working here, if I'm closing up at night or closing the shutters, I often thank Seabury for letting us show his room. <laughs> and I tell him, you know, I'll see you later in the week. Um, interesting tidbit about the draping on our canopy bed. As I said, when the house was turned into a museum, so many objects and belongings of the Treadwell family were unearthed including massive bolts of fabric, mm. which that's what this is. Now, the fabric on the bed was deteriorating, mm. but during um, yeah. the earlier part of this century, mm. some volunteers took that Treadwell fabric that was found and fashioned it into replica curtains for the canopy bed. So I love oh. those little tidbits of keeping that family story going. Um, and, um... Wow, I wonder if an indentation would have been found because Gertrude, was she found shortly after her death? Or I did she no, die she alone? Did, or she... she did not die alone. She had oh, okay, okay, okay. See, see. Her, okay. Yeah. So you can see Seabury's letter writing. He would have been doing the same for communication. Mm. But yeah. it is a bit of a difference. His bedroom looks out to the mm. main street, whereas the mother's looks out to the backyard. Luckily, he would not have had too much street noise, I assume, because. Uh, Oh, with, still, them and, yeah, oh, with the horses, horses and everything. Horses and oh, carriages. And, and clacking. Exactly. Oh, it yeah. have been just as noisy and dirty as it is today. <laughs> no so, wonder he still haunts his place. <laughs> right? He still resents it. We're going to pass through to what we have interpreted uh, yeah. as Seabreeze's study. Mm. Now, this small room could have been used for any number of things. Remember I said at one point there was 21 people living here. Yeah. This could have been a bedroom for a child or perhaps a guest bedroom. We have it interpreted as a study. Mm. And you can see it's smaller. It's we, okay. we still could, have could the, been, the yeah. details of the crown mm. molding. Yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward room, actually. A lot of yeah. New York apartments or buildings have this small room that is sort of above the stairs. Oh, I see, I see. Um, so you'll often see it as a study or a breakout office or something. So mm. it is a, a pretty typical. Okay. And uh, a few people are saying that they love the nightstand. 
Let me show the nightstand, I think. Yes. Oh yeah, it's a pretty, uh, very big nightstand as well. Yeah. And uh, has there been any other experiences or sightings here? Um, so, come on. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> there have been times yeah. when I have left Seabury's room mm -hmm. and I smell cigar smoke. Oh, interesting. Or like pipe smoke. Oh. And it's very distinct. And usually it's right about in this area. Oh. And, you know, you kind of ask yourself, was that my imagination? Yeah. Or did that really happen? Because that's a very specific smell. It is. And it also, is. no one is casually smoking a cigar here. Not at the museum, yeah. no. <laughs> Um, here we have just a couple more objects from the tiny beautiful mm. things that belonged to the Treadwell children. Maria says, wow, 21 people living here at one point? Was it that many? Wow. Imagine uh. how noisy it was. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the later years of the family living here, mm. there was an actual little bathroom put in right under here. Oh. It had a toilet. Now, when the cousin, uh, George Chapman, turned this into a museum, he had specific ideas. He wanted to take it back to a certain time period. So he felt that that did not necessarily reflect the time period. He wanted to go a little earlier. So he removed that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is interesting to think about how the family sort of kept up with technology and did little changes they like updated, that. Yeah. Right Let me show you just a little bit of this over sure. here, the, the booties and everything. <laughs> So, um, according to one of the rumors, there was a, a hidden room found in the home. Was is this true, or so what's the validity of that claim? I don't know. Let's oh. we'll find out. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> that's so exciting. <laughs> I was gonna ask you, can you get a shot of the bells? Then? Yeah, I recognize that from the starting sequence of Downton Abbey. Yes. Yeah, so they show all these bells for the servants. Exactly, yeah. and the bells had different sounds to them, so the servant would know, oh, that's Mrs. Treadwell. Ah. Um, another ghost story before we head up to the servants' quarters, speaking of them, one of our board members was right here in this area several mm. years ago, mm -hmm. uh, getting ready for an event that was going to be happening in the house during the evening, and he was chatting with someone, and something caught his eye, and so he turned and looked, and he saw a beautiful woman with big blue eyes and a gorgeous white gown just looking at him. Mm. Definitely not a guest or a visitor or an employee. We don't necessarily do historic costuming here at Merchant's House. Um, and so he sort of watched her and then someone called his name and he looked away and then looked back and she was gone. And later he went to the family portraits to say, oh, did I see a Treadwell? And it was Elizabeth, one of the sisters. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Looked exactly the same as the photo. I have not oh. had Elizabeth or Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna head up a flight of stairs. Yeah. And then we're gonna head up another flight of stairs. Ooh. And uh, a few people are asking, were there attics in the... There is a space. Yeah, there is a space, okay. We won't be able to go to it. Mm -hmm. We have this um, historic replica dress here. Oh, yeah. One of the oh. things to keep in mind is this is a very vertical house, right? How many stairs have we gone up and down? A lot. Right. How many stories in total? So you have the basement. Mm -hmm. You have the ground floor where the family room is. You have the parlor floor. You have the bedroom floor we were just on. The bedroom floor we're on now. The servants quarters. And then the storage space above. Wow. Seven stories nearly. It's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. Imagine doing all those stairs and not being able to yeah. see your feet. Yes, yes, I can imagine. Oh, no. <laughs> it was dangerous work to be a woman <laughs> yeah. just walking around up and down the stairs. And in fact, one of the sisters, uh, Phoebe, in her elderly age, did fall down the stairs and unfortunately succumbed to her injuries. Oh, no. So it was dangerous business. Hence the footsteps I just heard. Could be. <laughs> oh, no. I, that's so sad to hear. Uh, and this would have been the traditional hoop skirt basically this, right? Yes, a hoop skirt from yeah. the mid-century from mid 19th mm. century and the, the layers upon layers. One thing to note though during this era the laundry was predominantly the clothes that you wore closest to your body right? right? So the, what we think of as our under things would have been washed a lot more than say your corsets, your hoops, your outer skirts. Yes because the washing machine wasn't invented yet and it was a very laborious 
activity. Imagine yeah. washing, scrubbing, drying, ironing, hanging, folding, probably ironing again. It was laborious. laborious Yet another yeah. thing the servants were taking care of. Exactly. So this would have been floor bedrooms. Hmm. It is now our modern offices. Oh, all right. I see. So visitors yeah. don't go into these spaces, yeah. um, but they look very similar to what we saw downstairs in hmm. Seabury and Eliza's bedroom. Hmm. Wow, so these would have been more bedrooms. How many bedrooms would have been originally here? <laughs> well, let's, let's count. So we have Seabury and Eliza. Yeah. And then maybe that little office room off of Seabury's. Yeah. And then we have one, two, three, four here. Four so bedrooms that's seven. Here. And we're going to go upstairs, and there's possibly four more upstairs. Oh, my God. Okay, right? that's quite a lot. It's a yeah, house. it's a huge house. So we are heading up the final flight of yeah. stairs to what we call the servants' quarters. Mm. Uh oh, and we can see. Here. Wow, here you can really get a sense how tall this building is. Uh, yes, and the skylight yeah. at the top there. And you can see our bell system here. Oh, there it is. Now, oh, wow. this is currently storage for huh. more of the Treadwell's belongings. Now, you can imagine when the Treadwell's yeah. were here, it was not a museum. People were not traipsing through their house like they do our museum. So they right. perhaps had more room to display their furniture. Did Gertrude entertain a lot? She did not. She did not, okay. No, no. a little bit of a shut-in. Okay. So now we're here on the top floor where you've got two rooms here. Wait, wait let me pause you here. Let me show a little bit more here. It's a little spooky that everything's draped in <laughs> It like is a movie, right? <laughs> so what were we saying? We've got two rooms okay. here. And then two rooms over there. Oh, two more down there, wow. Yeah, now Let's we see. know that some of these were used for family. And we know that because the doors have an interior lock. Mm. So if you were a family member, you could go in, shut the door, lock it. No one's gonna bother you. Right. Some of them didn't. And we think that those were the servants' quarters. And so I will show you what we have interpreted mm. as, oh. oh sorry, uh, I'll pause you here, what, what is this? This is uh, part of the... Part of? To hold up the structure of the exactly. home? Exactly. Ah, if you have been in big cities and yeah. seen sometimes buildings have a star, like metal stars on the outside yeah, exactly. or squares, think of those as giant architectural tinker toys. It is literally holding the building together with massive ah. screws and bolts. So on either side of our structure, yeah. you would find those sort of bolts oh, and the tension keeps the building standing. <laughs> right. In Manhattan and Brooklyn, yeah. we often see them on the facade that faces the street. Exactly. So okay. if you were an Irish servant, hmm. this would be your bedroom. Yeah. You would share it with another girl. Hmm. Now, we have to sort of consider that, much like today, the city ran on immigrant labor. Hmm. This family could not run their house without the labor of the Irish girls. Now, the thing is, if you're an Irish immigrant, this is actually a pretty nice job to have. Mm. You have safe accommodations. You have community in other Irish women who have maybe been here longer. Um, you have three hot meals a day, and you're given time off to go to church and uh, be with your community even more. So as jobs went for a newly arrived immigrant from Ireland, this was a pretty nice job to have. You also had, strangely, bargaining power, because if a neighbor was like, oh, Mrs. Treadwell, I just love your pies. Oh, our, our girl Mary made those. That neighbor could say, Mary, would you like to come work for me for this amount of money more than Mrs. Treadwell is paying you? <laughs> and Mary would say, mm, I really like the Treadwells. Mrs. Treadwell, they're offering to pay me. And Mrs. Treadwell might say, I'll need that, stay here. Because it was hard it to was train coaching. a new employee, right? So, so I like to think that they had a little bit of autonomy wow. that maybe was not as common in other jobs. But it was hard to be away from home yeah. for these girls. And you can see over here on one of the beds, there is a rosary. Oh, yeah, because there have been a lot of Irish Catholics. Exactly. Would have all the servants been Irish in this, in this house? Or is there a mix? Yes. Yeah. Allow me to read you some of the census names here. Oh, yeah. We've got Mary Ann, Bridget Mary, Martha, Annie, Betsy, Annie, Bridget, Catherine, Mary, Emma, Mary, Mary. Yes. <laughs> we do know that some were English, but mostly Irish. Oh, well. <laughs> that's funny. Now, you'll notice that these beds mm. are metal. 
Mm -hmm. unlike the other beds that we saw. Mm -hmm. So there was a little bit of discrimination because the idea was that the Irish girls were maybe not as clean and they might have lice or bed bugs, which can live more heartily on a wooden bed. So we're giving them a metal bed. So oh, subtle so <laughs> indications of like, class, mm, exactly. Right. And, and they would have been on the top floor, which was usual for the lower classes to live on the higher floors exactly. at that time. Uh, the heat in the summer mm -hmm. would have been unbearable. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, then that hot. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. did not even have a stove all the time. So this oh, was a later addition. So you can imagine it might have been quite cold. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say some folks may be noticing the deterioration here on the wall. Uh -huh. um, that is water damage. Throughout mm -hmm. the house, you might notice some peeling paint. Because are a landmark, hmm. both city, state, and federal, and the building itself is owned by the city, we are not allowed to say, oh, let's go in there and fix that. That's not our job. We have to have the city do that. So we're often on city timeline. Even though we would love to take care of that right now, it's not something we can always do right away. And since it's a national historic landmark as well, is there something that you have to do uh, with the federal government, with the national I, commission? I believe or it's relegated to the city. Just to the city. Yeah, okay, I yeah. see. Okay. But it is, okay. it's red tape, right? In yeah. the preservation community. Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, the water damage is something that that's what happens to old structures. And Maria says it's nice natural lighting. Yeah, today it would have been, uh, this would be the one of the better apartments. <laughs> it really, I mean, if oh. you have that sort of light, that's amazing. And, uh, oh yeah, Susie says, why didn't they fix the wall? Because it's a landmark. And oh my, there's a lot of dampness in this uh, top floor. Yes, of <laughs> yeah, course. That's because they, they it probably drainage, they built some drainage, but probably wasn't the best. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. in my 1920s Brooklyn building, yeah. my basement floods, Every time it rains. Right. Every time. Um, so here we have a 19th century uh, heater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the air. The, we had turn on fans. Oh, fans. Okay, okay. So this is one thing that I'd like to show you. At one point, huh. um, the Treadwell daughter, Sarah, was injured in a carriage accident. Mm. Um, we're not exactly sure of the details, but the stairs were very difficult for her. And so the family installed an elevator. And this is the remnant it's of the elevator. elevator. Wow. It was a single person elevator wow. that went right through huh. for her. Now, again, when the house was turned Sarah into right a here. museum, yeah. they took the elevator out, but luckily salvaged the parts so we could tell the story. Hmm. That's the radiator. So That's not, right. not a ghost. <laughs> Here's the door that goes up to the storage space. Let's see the, the lingering sound of the elevator going up and down. <laughs> I imagine it must have been very heavy. Very heavy. So she used this elevator uh, to get up and down. Up and down the stairs. That's so, oh, that's like so poetically ironic that both, one sister died from the stairs and the other one had a tough time going up the stairs. Yeah. yeah. There's so yeah. many little stories like that in the family that mm. are so interesting. Um, this is a room that... Uh, this this top floor, I also feel the vibes when I'm closing up at night. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's head back downstairs. Would you like to take a quick look at the garden outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, oh, take let's take a quick that. look at the garden. Uh, what's the website people can access for saving the house? Uh, you can, if you just simply Google Merchant's House Museum, yeah. it is going to take you right there. So everyone, go to the Merchant's House Museum website. And there's a campaign to save the house because unfortunately there's construction that might not be so concerned about the stability of the house also. Unfortunately, the financial state of the house also because it'll be very expensive to sustain the home through construction. So go to that website, Merchants House Museum. Uh, org. org, especially if you're a New Yorker, uh, to lend your voice to the campaign to save the house. And it's not just New Yorkers okay. that can sign oh, great. Okay. to support our house and to try to halt the construction next door. We are one of the premier tourist destinations here in New York. We always ask people, how did you hear about us? And very often they're from all over and they said, oh, I just Googled house museums in New York City mm. or I Googled historic houses and here we are. And it's really special for us to be able to tell the story of one family in their home. Mm. And the fact that that's an endangered story um, we're just really hoping that lots of people jump online and sign that petition so we can send that to the mayor and raise the awareness of how critical this house is 
to telling the story of this family and this era of New York history. Yeah, I'm so gonna remind you to be careful on the stairs. Yes, <laughs> that's what <laughs> people are writing in the comments right now. Wendy, Susie, Daniel say, be careful on the stairs. Yeah, um, I never go down without holding the handrail. And, and some of the steps are smaller than the others. It, yeah. it is yeah. quite tricky. <laughs> but this, I'll get out of your way. This is one of my favorite views of the house, is this beautiful curved staircase oh, here. Oh yeah, beautiful. Just lovely. Mm. And is the home, has it been stable in terms of its lean or has it, has it leaned ever one way or the other? Um, to our knowledge, it has not leaned okay. one way or another. Oh, there have been measures to keep the house standing yeah. upright. The engineers mm -hmm. that have done the assessment inside the house have said that even a quarter inch yeah. sway or vibration either way is enough to damage not just our plaster work, but the structural integrity of the house. Oh no. <laughs> because again, yeah. it would have had other buildings. Ah, it did. Oh, it did, yeah. And Today, Daniel says, wow, this is steep. You know, it looks steep because of the camera angle, so it's not as steep as say, Dutch homes in the Netherlands, or the older homes of New York City, 1700s, but it is still steeper than say, your apartment building. So we're going to actually go out through the, okay, the little perfect. tea room here, and... Okay, so um, there is also the other haunted story. Have, have you guys talked about that? Or yeah, not? I okay. can give you some info there. Okay. So and here we go. Oh. We can hear, um, I believe those are blue jays. Here we are in our garden. And today it is interpreted by our master gardener, John, mm. to be a lovely Victorian garden. Surrounded this, by all these buildings. Right. <laughs> you know, in the, yeah. in the 19th century, those buildings would not have been there. It would be more scenic back then, right? It would, you would have had your stables, yeah. if you needed to rent a carriage and a horse, oh, right. um, your, your fellow neighbors in the Bond Street area. Um, during the Treadwell's time, this would have been predominantly grass because mm. the servants would have been laying out the linens mm. to dry in the sun so it would have been quite utilitarian in the back corner was your outhouse mm. and a job you would not want in the 19th century <laughs> was the night soil man so the night soil man was the person who in the night went collecting all of the manure and outhouse residue um, and unfortunately for the residents mm. of new york city they then dumped it in the east river <laughs> decimating yes. our oyster population for quite a good long time. Oh no. Oh. Ha oysters are our natural water filters. Happy yeah. to report the oysters are back and we know now you can't dump filth in the river. Good. Um, but such was the 19th century. So bad. Uh, sucks for anyone eating a good oyster pie back then. <laughs> and oysters were their predominant food. It, it they was, loved yeah. oysters. We have a historic recipe yeah. for pickled oysters. Not my favorite. Even pickled oysters, wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> because I know oyster pie was also a thing since oysters yes. were big as well. Oh, wow. So yeah. something that is original is yeah. the flagstones that go around the perimeter mm -hmm. were part of the original backyard. Mm. Um, the interior flagstones are a replica. And we do have garden parties. We have weddings here at the merchant's house. Um, oh, it could be rented for a wedding. Yeah, oh, wow, that's good can. to hear, wow. We can get married in the parlors or outside here. <laughs> that's yeah. great. We have tea parties and just different events. Now, um, for the person who yeah. wanted to know the story of the smelly man. Yes. So, Samuel Look, Seabury. And let's go inside here. So for we the have, sound. Yeah, for the sound, yeah, yeah. We can head into the parlor. <laughs> so we have just uh, one more story to share with you. Two more stories. Um, um, let us know if you have any last remaining questions. I'll be posting short videos also of the home. But go to the Merchant's House Museum website to check them out, uh, lend uh, your signature to the petition, and also come visit the house. It's a, it's a museum, it's awesome tours, like Ashley giving awesome tours all throughout the house. And they also, in the Halloween time, do haunted tours as well. So let's discuss the last two haunted stories. So yeah. we also have a robust online catalog of YouTube videos that pretty much started during the pandemic, like so many museums, but really we love when people come to visit us here. Right. Now, one of the more famous ghost stories, Samuel Seabury, one of the sons. He was, shall we say, scrappy. He was not good with money. Everyone knew it. And he sort of lived a rough and tumble life, um, despite coming from a family of wealth. Cut to the 1990s. The house is a museum. 
there's a woman upstairs in one of the bedrooms and she's looking at the display cases and she's sort of pushing her face against the glass, looking at some historic photos. And a voice next to her says, that's so-and-so, I knew him well. <laughs> and she okay. turns to look and it's this, this disheveled sort of older man with like a pockmarked face and like mothball smell. And she was like, oh, and she's thinking, hmm. how could you have known him? And he's, he continues to say things like, you're looking at the family. And she's really weirded out and just doesn't quite understand what's happening, but he was there. So then she hears her, the people she came with in the hallway and she turns and she says, I turn to them with the look of like, help, you know, like a weird person is talking to me, help. Yeah. And they were like, what? And she looked and the guy is gone. Oh. So they finish their tour and she says, I think something, something's up. Hmm. So she says to the docent, I think I saw a ghost upstairs. And the docent says, oh yeah, was it a man or a woman? <laughs> <laughs> so this docent is unfazed. And she says, well, it was a man. So she shows her some family pictures. And she says, she sees the picture of Seabury as a young man. And she says, oh, it was him, but he was much older. And she describes, and the docent said, yeah, you're describing him in his later life. That's who you saw. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yes. that's like a pretty intense experience, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, that is. And then the, la the last uh, thing I'm curious about was that apparently Gertrude had a lover that was of the Catholic faith. So this is... This is a little bit of a history mystery. We're not okay. totally sure. Okay. She did have a suitor who she loved very much. And she was Protestant. Yes. Yeah. We don't know why that relationship ended. Okay. Could have been Seabury, her father, did not approve. Could have been that Seabury thought, these men are after my daughters for their wealth. Could have been the religion thing. We don't know. But mm. we do know she never married. Mm. She continued to correspond with him, though. So... They had oh, a connection. There's they evidence had a connection. Of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fascinating. So huh. it's, it's one of the many Treadwell mysteries. You know, when we look at 19th century history, mm. um, we have to make guesses mm. and infer based on the evidence we have. And unfortunately, it is a very um, patriarchal history yeah. because there are a lot more records for men and business and that type of thing. And uh, women's history is often sort of relegated to letters and diaries. Right. And we do our best to tell the stories as best we can. And we're lucky in the merchant's house that we have the house and the objects and what ephemera they did leave behind and the stories of people who knew them as well to continue to tell our story here in the house. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Carol asks, what is the lace behind you? Great, you can come yeah. a little closer. Right. Let's go. Let just move. So in the 19th century, Yeah. We did not have window screens the way we have now. Mm. But you would want to open your windows to get right. fresh air. But the filth from the city streets is going to come flying in. So these were oh. your beautiful but uh, practical way of keeping the dust and the dirt from getting into your beautiful parlor room. Now, oh, the servants wow. would have to wash these several times a week sometimes, depending yeah. on how dirty they got. So mm. it's practical but beautiful and functional. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So everyone... Thank you so much for watching. Uh, when are tours happening here in the Merchant's House Museum? So we do tours every day, Wednesday through Sunday at noon. We also do private tours. Oftentimes, if a big family is visiting New York, they'll just book a private tour for the family, which is always fun. Um, and then throughout the year, it changes depending on the season. We do walking tours on the weekends. There's a lot of different programming that we offer, including live music, live readings, um, and of course, our October spooky tours. And to visit the museum, do you have to reserve in advance or you can show up? You can, uh, you can walk show in. up. Okay, great. You can reserve in advance, uh -huh. you can show up. Either way, we welcome you and we can't wait to share the history of the house with you. And one more time, the name of the museum and where it's located. Merchant House Museum in the NoHo neighborhood of beautiful Manhattan. You can find us on 4th Street between the Bowery and Lafayette. Nice. This is Ashley, everyone. Ashley, thank you so much for showing us around the home. Thank you. This was an amazing tour. Stay tuned for the short videos. I'll be posted after this. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day. And I always do a wave goodbye if you want to join me. Bye-bye. <laughs>